Hi everyone, thank you for joining us uh, this evening or late afternoon. Uh, my name is Lara, I am the Community Manager at ELU. Before we get uh, started and before I will introduce our guest speaker of today, I'd like to just quickly tell you a little bit about this series. Now ELU is a university that's offering uh, degree programs in uh, the tech domain uh, to uh, work on the skills gap, especially in Europe. Uh, there's not enough talent maybe uh, in latest uh, jobs like data science and with this uh, series, this webinar series, A Day in the Life, we talk to different data professionals to get a better grip on what they are actually doing day to day, what their work week looks like, how they make impact for their business or for their clients, and also how they got started. So it's to kind of demystify uh, this domain that of course has been uh, very hip it's been called the uh, kind of sexiest job of the 21st century, uh, but it may not always be as well understood. So it's for this reason that we're offering this uh, free series to people who may want to start uh, or are interested in getting to learn more about this domain. And today I'm very excited to be talking with Renate van Kempen. So Renate, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me, Lara. <laughs> And Renate is a freelance uh, data scientist, so we'll also be talking today a bit about uh, how she decided to work as a freelancer and what the uh, benefits are, but also what the challenges are, because I think a lot of us now working from home may dream of a career where we can just work as a digital nomad on an island, but I'm sure it's a lot more complicated than that. <laughs> and Renate, she started as a data scientist after she got her certification through a data science uh, academy from Tech Unista and now has been working as a freelance data scientist, offering her expertise in data and also in business intelligence to a variety of clients. Um, so we'll also be talking about how she is working with these clients and how she can translate the added value to them. Uh, and for this purpose, she has also founded a company called Buy Me, so Business AI Made Easy. Uh, maybe you're not, so you can also tell us a little bit about that. Sure. So, thank you again so much. Thank you everyone for joining. I will have some questions that I have prepared for Renata, but if you do have any questions yourself, you're more than welcome to drop them in the chat or in the Q&A box below and I'll also make sure uh, to cover them too. Uh, so without further ado, uh, let's get started. Maybe Renata, could you first tell us for a non-expert, for someone like me who, not, who doesn't come from a tech background, uh, what does a data scientist really do? Oh, thank you for that question, Lara. Um, just to explain it really shortly, uh, for me, data science is finding complex patterns in a large data set. Um, a data scientist has um, a combination of skills that they need during the day-to-day -day tasks. And most of the skills are based on stats because statistics is the basis of the science part of data science. And uh, data science is... Um, and emphasize on science because uh, of course it's not only about data it's a more it's broadly um, then you need to have good communication skills because you have to have uh, conversations with all types of people within the business all kinds of stakeholders you have to be able to explain uh, what the process is so you have to take them through uh, the, the entire process that you have made up for uh, that you thought of to uh, solve their problem with the, the solution that you found and you have to know all of all about the algorithms and the models that you're using and that you want to use for, to solve the problems or to predict the future and that's uh, uh, fun uh, if you are able to do that that's not always the case and then uh, you have to have of course uh, a lot of skills within the business uh, knowledge and um, and such as you have to be able to visualize, but you also have to understand what do businesses need and how, how are they, their production process or their company processes build up so that you can um, clearly get the real question behind the question uh, uh, up front. Great, thank you so much. Um, and uh, you have specifically made a choice, um, or I think it was your choice to work as a freelance data scientist. So uh, could you tell us uh, why you made that choice? Sure. Well, actually it all started because I wanted to help and see more companies than only once, uh, only one. Um, and uh, being a freelancer enables you to see all different sorts of businesses and um, well 
just like I told somebody who asked me lately, why did you choose to be a freelancer? Um, remember the first time you get in a company, you get so many details and information and you see so many new things and there are a whole and another world is opening up to you. And, and that's also the case for me whenever I go into a, a new project. Uh, I see a, a complete different situation and a whole new world is opening up for me. And that's really the case why I chose to be a freelancer. Yeah, that sounds exciting. It's like you get a new kind of onboarding and orientation experience yeah. time and time again. Uh, so, of course, Renata, you haven't always been a data scientist. You've uh, had a longer career, I think, of maybe 10, 15 years already before you uh, did the uh, Techunista uh, Academy. Uh, so could you tell us a little bit about your journey before you choose, chose to uh, join that uh, course and uh, how you chose then to actually move into data science? Sure. Um, it's a long story, but I'll try to keep it short to keep everybody uh, on board here. Um, uh, the thing is, I love solving big puzzles. So uh, my entire career has been that that has been the, the threat, the red line through throughout my career. Um, it, it's about uh, project management. So uh, having a, a, a new idea or an improvement that you want to implement in a business and then uh, making it up in uh, to small projects that you can implement and help businesses with and so project management is one of my tasks I've been working for 16 years for companies before I started the, the education at the Academy at Techunista um, and then uh, the last few years uh, my job transferred I, I came from a Okay, <laughs> my uh, background is commercial economics, so I studied economics in Utrecht, and um, uh, I've always worked in the um, sales and marketing departments of companies, and the last few years I worked for a company called CNC that makes substrates for mushroom um, growers the, um, in the sales and marketing department, and the last few years I did the market intelligence for them as well, sales control. Uh, the sales control part was only about financial uh, part of the business, so I'm uh, making sure that we know what the costs were, were exactly for uh, each product. And the market uh, intelligence was more about getting the trends of the market within the um, substrates and, and broader within the entire um, uh, uh, vegetable market, so that we could um, make sure that we help our customers who are actually the mushroom growers uh, to uh, get better um, understanding of what the custom their customer so we as a customer in the supermarket need and then um, make sure that the um, demands and the asking uh, uh, part is uh, matching <laughs> And uh, so, so I can see how you've always kind of maybe worked uh, around market intelligence, around business intelligence. So I do yeah. see how that translates to maybe uh, moving into data science. Um, but when did you choose to become a data scientist? And can you tell us a little bit of how you try, how you approach that yourself? Sure. The last part uh, of my previous job, I did a project with together with the Wageningen Universiteit with TNO and with uh, um, uh, GPS. <laughs> um, they, uh, that was a really cool project that we set up and it was all about predicting the uh, demand to make sure that um, uh, we reduce the um, uh, garbage, well, the, the pol pollution made by food, um, uh, oh, I know my English is a bit bad, but um, th that we reduce the, um, uh, that we match consumption so that we reduce the, the, the waste, the, the food waste. Um, and in that project, that was really cool. And we saw that there was a lot of data going on, but uh, nobody from our group knew how to make that data valuable, or to get valuable insights and to have a, a prediction model made. So that's when I, I really first realized, oh, there has to be a job for somebody who does this kind of things. And I, I, we started investigating and we found, uh, we found out uh, together with the entire group that data science was the missing link. So um, when the company came into bad weather and I uh, knew already that marketing and sales is always, uh, well, always going to be hit by a, um, a, a 
reorganizations. Uh, I thought, no, okay, I'm going to search for a, a, a education or a, a change of um, uh, a win for me, for myself, that um, uh, to to get to know more about data science because data science was really like the missing piece of the puzzle for me. So um, yeah, then I found within like a few days, I found Techunist Academy that was a Microsoft Azure uh, certified data science track that they uh, offered me. Um, all women, so uh, all we've all to empower women in tech so really applied to me as well and then um yeah then within two weeks i was already starting the education there and academy it was really fun got to know 30 amazing women and they all came from totally different backgrounds but it was yeah real cool to to do that together and within four months it was a bit of a hassle because i have a, a um family and three small children and a husband who has a own company as well but uh, it was so much fun and I had I got to be in the arena so Amsterdam arena so for all not Ajax fans I, I'm sorry but it was really good to be there <laughs> and to get to know more about um, about data science actually. Mm -hmm. That's that's great to hear I think I, I can only imagine how intense it must have been for those four months when all of that information was condensed yeah uh, really. but I also really like to hear that there is an organization that does really focus on kind of bringing more women into data science as well because it is of course still a tech domain and still a bit uh, dominated by uh, men mm -hmm. um, so it's been now more than a year since you've completed the academy the tech unista uh, so what does your current work week looks uh, look like could you walk us through like a kind of regular uh, week for you if there is something like a regular week <laughs> Yeah, well, that's a the thing. There's no such thing as a regular week for me. Uh, but that's also why I chose to be a freelancer because I have so many different assignments and different projects running at the moment. Um, this morning I was working on a, a data set, really wrangling with the data and getting to know uh, the data better and get insights from the data uh, for a retail organization. And this afternoon I was just uh, preparing a, a a workshop that I'm going to do for a company uh, get responsive and also preparing some modules that I wanted to make for another company tomorrow Avenue so yeah it was really fun to get to have uh, so many different assignments so I've done some uh, bigger projects that that were for three months uh, for example with the Wagner University um, to get together with an entire team of researchers who are really good at the researching part and wanted to know more about what the data science part can bring to their ex as an extra to their research and uh, together we made a, a cool prediction of uh, consumption goods for the entire world so without having any data up front we we got together and made a hypothesis hypotheses and um, got the data from web scraping and uh, making a data set complete so it was really fun but then I got to do all the data wrangling and the web scraping and everything myself and up to the predicting predictive modeling and uh, that that's uh, a team effort together that everybody took a bit of the web scraping and the data wrangling but it was so much fun to do and but most of the time my week is completely different my day is completely different I don't know what is happening unless I've planned something already <laughs> so yeah yeah, I think uh, you've talked a bit now about the uh, things you really like about being a freelancer, uh, why you chose to be a freelancer, the variety, the working with different clients, um, seeing the impact on different businesses, different sectors. Um, but as I said, I think a lot of people have maybe a rosy picture of being a freelancer, but I can only imagine it's very challenging at times as well. So yes. what do you think are maybe some misconceptions about working as a freelancer or some of the bigger challenges you're facing? Yeah. Well, the biggest challenge, of course, is that I started without any prior knowledge of data science um, so that I didn't have a track record. Uh, so I had to build up my entire portfolio from scratch. And uh, doing that is a, has been a long road because, well, you don't have projects ready uh, to show that you're capable of doing the data science product, projects. So every time you get into... Um, well, there is a vacancy or a freelance possibility, but all of the time they ask for a minimum of two or three years of experience uh, within all of the packages. 
and uh, you have to know uh, almost every tool available um, which is not <laughs> doable for anyone but so the thing is I started out and um, I saw that it, that was what they were demanding so I started making my portfolio and um, the tip I can give everybody who is uh, into freelancing who would like to be in freelancing is a show and an exhibit your superpower so um, besides of course showing that you can you're able to make a project from scratch and into a, a good predictive model or a model that works or algorithm that works that that is always uh, the base that you have to do because you have to show off your uh, capabilities that you can do via Kaggle or um, uh, a contest like that. And um, then you have to be on GitHub because GitHub is really good to show your, um, well, to showcase all of the projects that you've done and to make sure that all of the data is um, shared uh, on well, open. Um, and then you have to find your superpower. So for me, that was a bit difficult because what is my superpower? But after uh, a while, I realized that, of course, I have, I'm business savvy. I have a, a way of communicating with people so I can explain really well what it is the scientist does and how it works and what the models, why the models uh, I chose are the models you have to use. And um, that explainability, that was my superpower. And uh, that's also why I probably got into the teaching part as well to have a, um, a webinar and everything there. Um, and uh, the, the other thing is I, will li I like uh, working in Power BI and with Power BI. So uh, another superpower of me is to be able to use Python within Power BI and to predict with uh, Power BI for uh, larger data sets, uh, what, what they can do with not only the data that they see hindsight, but also upfront. So they can forecast within Power BI. So that's how I got to do it, but um, it's been a real hassle. It, it's not easy to being a, a, a freelancer starting uh, without any prior track. Uh, so you have to be motivated, keep, motiv keep the motivation high and be um, resilient because you get a lot of no's and a lot of uh, almost there but still knows <laughs> so yeah that that sometimes sets me back but my husband is also very supportive so he's always there to help me uh, yeah saying okay uh, th this was a no but you're an entrepreneur so you get a lot of no's <laughs> and there has to be a yes eventually so um you have to make sure that you plant a lot of seeds and then the growing starts uh, after a few months or for me a year <laughs> yeah well by the sound of it, it it's definitely working out and of course it's also uh, very nice to have someone uh, nearby who also has the experience of having uh, his own company i understand yeah um so uh there's a question coming in from uh, someone in the audience uh, now you were talking about also how important it is to document the impact that you make on your different clients uh to put all your things uh publicly this is about uh the the impact you can make in different sizes size of companies so how effectively do you think uh, the data science can bring advantages in small scale businesses uh instead of bigger scale companies do you think it's helpful for small scale, small scale companies to invest in data science technology to bring more results or profits? Uh, definitely, yes. Um, to elaborate more about it, um, I think that there is a big chance for all small companies now uh, to have more um, insights from their own data and have that enriched with external data to have a, even a, a better uh, way forward and also to get uh, ahead of their competitors. Um, so I, I think that ex especially for smaller companies, not, not just one person companies, because like me, I, I'm just one person company, but smaller companies up to 50, up to 100. Yeah, definitely they can use uh, data science skills. And also because they're just, um, they all, most of the smaller companies want to grow as well. Um, if they don't, then maybe data science is not for them. But if they do want to grow and they want to grow faster, they have to get uh, a, 
besides a good knowledge of the data, they have to get a good data quality. So they have to know what, how the quality of the data is now and how they can ensure that the data, because in garbage in is garbage out. So the data input has to be really good. And because they're small, they might have a smaller data set to work on. And then they're way ahead of the competitors who don't have, um, uh, well, they don't have that much same mindset. And also um, uh, they can grow faster because they uh, can have specific questions that they want to be answered. Like for example, um, what is my, uh, my churning, the churn of my co uh, customers or uh, where do my uh, customers, uh, new customers, where are my new customers and how do I approach them well? Or uh, what is the, uh, decision drive uh, for some of the customers, for example, or uh, even the production. It's so, okay, uh, where are the uh, product possibilities to get more uh, out of the current production? So yeah, there are a lot of things that can really help. And of course, logistics that can really help small companies. So I think because bigger companies, they have more um, problems because they are larger and they have bigger data sets and they have uh, politics within the company so if they have a question then somebody else has to have the opinion about that same question or the question is not well formulated so I think that within smaller companies you can even be faster and give more added value as a data scientist I hope this yeah, is a, a clear answer very good point I think um, I mean maybe bigger companies may have all the resources uh, but because of the politics and the a different stakeholders involved it might take a lot longer of course and in a smaller company you might be able to translate that impact uh, more quickly mm -hmm. um, so i can imagine that it's, it's it's quite important to be able to also have time for assessment or evaluation when you kind of close a project when you're talking to new or potential clients how do you uh, show them or how do you try to convince them of the added value that you can bring to their uh, organization well um first we we have a, like um, 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 like an inspiration or um, uh, head to head to to understand what the company is about and what their goal is in the future. Because I strongly believe and I um, I think that a vision or the strategy that a strategy that a, that a company has um, drives the business questions. So if you want to be a number one in the in your uh, business then uh, we have to see, uh, me as a data scientist, okay, what are the steps that you want to make as a company and which goals in between do you need uh, help for with uh, the base of um, facts? Uh, well, you need to have fact-driven uh, decisions, of course, um, because um, steering a company on just the guts is not really why you want to go and move forward because it's a really uncertain way of moving forward so you can either um well data can either help or um with um well um cancel the decision that you want to make with the based on the data so i think that just looking at the goal that you want to achieve then uh going back okay what is the question that i have and then going back okay what is the data that i need to answer that question so that's uh, normally how I work with companies and they found it really valuable because because their goal is clear and their question might be clear after a few questions that I ask and then uh, then we can work from that and we can work towards the questions so and the goal. Mm -hmm. So I hear that it's very important to have a good inquiry with the uh, potential client uh, beforehand and you just uh, kind of articulate the, the goal together uh, mm -hmm. before you get started. Um, so we're coming towards the end of the uh, webcast. We have a few minutes left. So if any of you okay. do have questions, do make sure to drop them. Um, as we're closing, uh, what is some of the advice that you may wish to uh, give to uh, future data scientists or people who are looking to get started in the field? Uh, oh, that's a good question. Um, I think uh, go for your uh go for it um of course um data science is very broad so you can have your own speci speciality oh sorry specialty inside data science so um know what your superpower is know what you want to do with your 
data science skills in the future and how you want to implement them at the, within companies or within freelance as a freelancer or um, so just follow your heart I think because the, uh, there are so many possibilities there are so many possibilities for for data scientists to uh, really uh, go out there and help companies um, another great tip is uh, really showcase what you can if you want to be a freelancer uh, do that uh, with a good portfolio do that with a, a solid base uh, make sure that you have the knowledge and um, that you're able to make uh, um, uh, the well the projects and uh, um, yeah also um, make sure that that you get one special uh, part of the data science one one specific part that you really ma manage really well and then um, and that you master at it so that you can have a step ahead of your competitors in the data science field. Thank you. And one question, uh, maybe as a follow up to that uh, from someone in the audience. Um, of course, there's a lot of technical skills. You already talked also about the importance of soft skills, of business skills uh, as a data scientist. But regarding the technical skills and specifically the programming skills, what are some of the programming languages to focus on as a data scientist? Yeah, you, you best focus on uh, getting to know SQL uh, because you have to extract, transform and load the data. Um, you have to know uh, a bit about uh, the data warehouse and data lakes uh, op options that, that there are in the world. So uh, I would suggest uh, Azure as well as uh, Amazon. Um, uh, and you have to know either Python or R by, uh, by heart. That's the language that you have to be able to work completely in. Um, you can choose either one, both are, are really good. Uh, my preference is Python because for me it's really intuitive, uh, but uh, R is also very, very well to work with. Um, and then you have to know one of the visualization tools. So either Tableau, Click, or that's the uh, three top three. So Tableau, Click, or uh, Power BI. So those uh, languages are the base and then get to know more about what you want. For example, if you want to be more uh, data engineer, data scientist, then get to know more on the back end. And if you want to be more a front end developer or uh, to say data science with, combined with front end, you have to get to know Java and Node.js and everything to uh, make the applications. Thank you. Uh, so to close off, um, I, I'd love to just uh, pick your brain a little bit about what's to come. Um, now, what is one issue within data science or the field of data uh, that you feel like we should be paying attention to or that you are most excited about for the coming uh, years? Well, for me personally, that's vision AI because um, that's also what I'm uh, working on on a project right now. And there are so many things possible with video capturing and uh, Im image capture capturing and well, I think that that's something we should all um, look out for because also GPT-3, there are so many things possible at the moment uh, for data scientists and also cool tech, so much cool technology that you can use uh, as a data scientist. So it's really like a candy store. Um, yeah, uh, also be aware of uh, making sure that you always think about GPT GDPR and uh, how to uh, in, um, incorporate uh, the, well, to make sure that you're doing it accordingly to your best efforts, because there is no real uh, law uh, yet for data scientists. So we're a little bit freewheeling at the moment. So I think once there get, uh, gets, gets to be a law that we all have to uh, up, uh, apply to, then um, make sure that you were already there, that you didn't do anything that is not a, um, something that you want to do for, well, uh, within the law. <laughs> mm -hmm. Great, well, thank you so much. Uh, thank you also to everyone in the audience and thank you for your questions. Uh, of course, a big thank you to you, Renata, for telling us about your uh, work, about your superpower. Uh, I think that was a very <laughs> good tip as well. Um, Thank you, Lara. This session has been recorded, so if you would like to take a look at this session uh, or maybe one of our previous sessions, you can do that on our YouTube channel, European Leadership University, and in two weeks we'll be back talking to another uh, data professional. Thank you, everyone, and have a lovely evening. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.